In this video, I'd like to look at using Excel's Linest formula to pick out individual parts, components of a fit. So I'm going to start off with the simplest, sort of a linear fit, and then pull out, extract out, sort of isolate a uh, slope intercept, and then do the same for an exponential fit, a power law fit, a polynomial fit. Okay. So I'm actually going to start with an index because the, the formula I'm going to use, the Linest formula, is, a, is an array formula. And then I want to, in the point of what I want to show here, is how to pick out uh, parts, individual parts, of what Linest gives me. So I want to be able to uh, pull out pieces of an array, and that is that uses index. I'm going to start off with index, and I just have a silly thing here. I just have uh, some data, and for lack of any better thing, I just have the, the a string, but what row and what column I'm in. Um, and so here is my array. It's going from, uh, what is it, F4 over to J8. And... Um, Here's just a place where a user like me can type in uh, the row and column that uh, he or she wants. And so I can pick out the row and the column I want. And then, so here it is, here's index. An index has three arguments, the array, and then the row that you're in and the column that you are in. Okay, so let's go over and do the simplest one, the simple linear fit. So I have some data from physics. This is Millikan's data for the photoelectric effect. Okay, the X's are the frequency of light and the Y values are this thing called a stopping potential. And here's the fit, okay. So I made a chart and added a trend line and displayed the equation. Now I want to grab these pieces individually. Okay. So here is uh, Linest as a formula. And here I'm using the version with two arguments. So the first argument is the Y's and the second argument is the X's. Okay. Um, and then uh, I want to use it in combination with index to separate those two things to get, and sort of, instead of coming up here and just sort of saying, oh, well, I have what I want in A10, and I have the other one I have, I have what I want in B10, I'm going to do combine index and linest to get it all to just uh, one thing in one cell. Okay. So here was my linest, my B's and my, my Y's and my X's, my B's and my A's in this case. Linest gave me an array and I'm saying that I want the first row, first column of that array. And that's what index does for me. And that, as we saw, was the slope. And then similarly, the, the intercept. Okay. Now, if you're familiar enough with Excel, you'll say, well, that's just a major overkill because there's a function for the slope and a function for the intercept because straight lines are so, it's such a common way to fit things. So they, they made it simpler than what I just showed you. Um, and one, two things. One is uh, I want to show you that uh, Linest has more data in it if you want. And also I'm going to show you how to go beyond the linear to um, exponential, power law, polynomials, and so on. So first things first, let's show that uh, Linest uh, can have more arguments and give you more information. So one thing I want to show is that Let's do it this way. Let's 
move this graph out of the way. Let's enter here equals minus. Now it's an array formula, and array formulas used to be more cumbersome in Excel in that you would have to say how many things I'm expecting to get out of it. You'd have to highlight that whole area. Then you'd have to use control shift enter when you're entering the function. But array formulas have become simpler in the last few years. So I can just say in one cell, do linest, do my Ys, which were the Bs, do my Xs, which were the As. And I want to show you these other arguments. The next one is, do I want a constant? So do I do I want a constant? Yeah, yes, I do. And do I want additional statistics? Uh, yes, I do. Now it's not very nice, uh, frankly, to tell you what these statistics are, but it does have them. So if you learn what they are, and then you have this uh, method where you can sort of get some of this information. Um, I happen to have installed the analysis tool pack. And so I ran the analysis tool pack on the same data. And those results are over here on this analysis tab. And we can see if you sort of go back and forth. So here again was the slope and the intercept. And then uh, next are the, the sort of the standard errors for the, the two. So... So that is here, that's that's reproducing this. So here's the slope and inner, sorry, yes, slope and intercept. Here are the standard error for those. So that is one of the stat giving to you. This stat here, the 0.998 is the R squared value. And then there's a combined um, standard error. So that is the standard error of like this is these standard errors which are saying standard error here is specifically the intercept and the slope whereas this is more sort of the whole combination thing and this is what we call the r squared value what else is there in there uh this is the f and the de residual degrees of freedom i'm just not explaining what any of these things are just showing you where they are and uh, over here in the analysis tool pack they're given a name so if you know what these things are, fine. So here are the residual degrees of freedom. And here is the F for the regression. That's something that this gives you. And then we have um, this 4.89 and 0 0.008. And where were they? Um, they were the SSs. Uh, so that's up here. So this is some the ANOVA. Um, and you get the, again, the regression. So it was the 0.489 and the 0 0.008. So there they are. So, so it gives you more information if you know what it is and know how to apply it. Um, okay, that's not really my interest here, but I'm just showing you in the simplest example, the straight line, the other things it gives you. Now, here's what I want, do want to show you is here's some data that is uh, fit to an exponential trend line. So it is atmospheric pressure versus altitude. Here it is uh, fit, and I'm using an exponential trend line to display the equation. So I would like to use uh, Linest to get this 107 and this point negative 0.147 that you see here in the fit. Okay, so if I just do, again, the simple equals linest, and it I can see it gives me that minus 1.47, but it, it's not giving me my 107. But if I take the exponential of this for the exponential of F18 of this 4.67, that is giving me my 107. So I so this linest is giving me one of the values and something like and something from which I can get the other value. So, uh, but I want them individually. That's so the whole point here is to grab each one sort of individually. And so I am 
Here I'm combining index and linest and a log because that's the linest is as it's linest, as it suggests, as it outlines. And so then the way you uh, the way you sort of turn an exponential data into linear data is by taking a log of the y values. So here's linest, but instead of y's, we have the log of the y's and then the x's. So these are the y values, but with a log, here are the x values. And again, I want row one, column one, and that gives what I'm calling here the factor, that minus 1.47. And then here I'm doing, it's a very long string of things. Let's get some color coding up here. We have linest uh, with the log of the y's and the x's. And then we are using index to get the first row and the second column. And then we're taking over all the exponential of that. And that's what gave us our coefficient out front of the exponential fit. Okay, so that was an exponential fit with one log, a log of the y's for power law. So for here, I'm doing uh, Kepler's law. I have the distance, or at least some distance. These are elliptical, so the distance can change a bit, but for, I don't remember where I got this data from, but the distance from the uh, planet to the sun and the period, the time to go around the sun. And Kepler's law says that they are related by a power law. And so here is, and, and here's that result. I fit that data, made a chart, gave, gave myself a power law trend line, displayed the equation, there it was. Okay. So then uh, here is my uh, linest or linest. I don't know how to actually pronounce this function. Um, and for power laws, you take a log of both the X and the Y. So there is linest and with a log of the Y's and a log of the X's. It gave us our two values. The first one is quite simply the power. And then the second one, in the same way that we saw in the exponential, is, is not reproducing this 1.726 out front. But if we play the same trick, if we take the exponential of it, we are getting that value. Okay. And so then let's do it individually. Okay, so here is our game. Let me highlight, get some power, get some coloring up here. Line S log of the y's, log of the x's. Okay, that's an array formula. I want the first row and the first column, and that gave me my power. This one's one more. So here is line s, log of the y's, log of the x's. Line s gives me an array. I want the first row and the second column this time, and then I needed to take the exponential of that. That gave me the number out front of the power law. All right, one last one that I want to show you. Um, I'm going to do a polynomial of order two, and I'll let you figure out how to do it if you have a higher polynomial. Um, so this data is uh, projectile data. Um, so something was shot up in the air, sort of actually turned up a little bit upside down because of the way the data was taken. But here is some data of some ball flying through the air. Uh, position versus time, and that fits to a polynomial. So here it is in Excel. Take the data and fit it to a uh, polynomial of order two. Display the equation. Here is uh, line S. Um, and here are the Ys. And then here are the Xs. And we're raising the x's to, and we have this curly bracket notation, the uh, a2 colon a23 caret curly bracket 1 comma 2. I'm going to have a, a coefficient of x and x squared. Okay. And that gave me three numbers, and this one's more 
direct to those three numbers are right there, the ones that you see in the displayed formula in when I made the graph and displayed the equation of polynomial fit of order two. And then here is the game of using the index and extracting them. So Linux of the Y's, comma the X's, the X's are raised to curly bracket one and two, that red parentheses, the end of line S. And then I'm taking an index and I'm taking one, the first row, one, the first column, and that was the highest power. So I'm telling you there how to, if you had like a third order polynomial, how to work with it. It's the, the, the first column is the highest power. So row one, column one was the quadratic. Oops, escape. And then the only change here is row one, column two, and then uh, row one, column three to get the x to the two, x to the one, and x to the zero, or the constant. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you. We played around with line est uh, and index to get individual isolated cells in Excel with individual fitting parameters of various sorts. We started off with uh, uh, just a straight line, then we moved to exponential and power and polynomial. I didn't do a logarithm fit, but if you wanted a logarithm fit, you would play, you would put the log on the X's instead of the Y's and play fairly similar games. Um, so that's what I wanted to show here. Thanks for your attention.